Intel is very proud of the fact that the majority of our manufacturing is here in the U.S. and the majority of our research and development is here in the U.S. From their earliest days, their biggest strength came from within. But does Intel have the vision to write their own future? Or will the chips fall where they may? All this week, we're camping out at one market in San Francisco so we can talk to some of our nation's finest and fastest growing companies as part of our Invest in America Defining the Future series. And with a theme like that, how can we not check in with Intel, the semiconductor titan, whose CEO, Brian Krasanich, had a one-on-one -on -one meeting with President Trump just last week, where he announced that his company is opening a $7 billion chip-making facility in Arizona. It will create 3,000 new jobs. Of course, it's been in the works, but it was still a very smart move for Intel. While we like that this company seems to be in the president's good graces, what really matters here is the fact that Intel's a company in transition. The Intel of old was all about making processors for personal computers, but now that the PC is no longer a growth business, they're diversifying some of the hottest end markets out there, like the data center, uh, gaming, connected car, drones, artificial intelligence. That's part of the reason why Intel was able to deliver a strong quarter two and a half weeks ago, although since then the stock has pulled back a couple of bucks from where it was trading before it reported. Still, I think this company's transition could unlock a lot of more upside if you're willing to be patient. Let's take a closer look with Brian. He's the CEO of Intel. Get a better sense of the transformation that's unfolding and where his company's said. Brian, good to see you. Good to see you, Jim. Okay, now, Brian, I think of Intel as Intel Inside. Sometimes I think that that ad campaign has limited the way we think of Intel because you're big in artificial intelligence, machine learning, data center, and that's not just what's inside the PC. Well, that's true, but we, we've tried to think about it as expanding. And so we're inside anything that consumes, uses, or processes data. And, and the okay. data center is a great example of that. And everything, everything you saw at the Super Bowl, everything you see us getting into, whether it's autonomous cars or drones, it's, it's all The drones about at the Super Bowl, obviously, a great, uh, uh, just an extravaganza that was your own that other companies can hire and do. Yes. It, in fact, that's become a, a business where, you know, again, large amount of compute to manage you know, uh, hundreds and, and, and eventually thousands of drones in the air at one time. Okay, now there was a, a sense in some of the media that, well, you just met the president and you had this piece, thing on the drawing board and all that happened is you took credit for something that wasn't, uh, that was going to happen anyway. That's actually not true, right? No, it, it, in fact, this was all about tax. If you take a look at that factory that we're going to build out in Arizona, with the current tax system that the U.S. has, relative to building that overseas, $2 billion additional cost over 10 years. The tax plan that the administration is putting forward would drastically reduce that. Okay. Now, there's a lot of questions. So we're betting on that tax plan coming into fruition. Okay. Uh, when you met with the president, what was it like? I mean, I know I don't mean to be like a groupie about it, but you, <laughs> you've had the best one-on-one -on -one that I know of anyone in tech. Best meaning, most substantive. And I just thought you could share with us some of the things that you went over. You know, for us, it was really a chance to start the dialogue, you know, with, with every administration and, and, and really in every country that we operate in. You have to start a dialogue by building a relationship and understanding what their needs are and what, what our needs are. And so it was a good chance to sit down and talk about everything from uh, immigration, tax reform, uh, our, our position on diversity and, and women and and underrepresented minorities in the workplace. And, and all of those areas were able to talk to, to both the president, but also really substantive time with his staff. You know, after that meeting, I spent a solid hour and a half in the White House talking to his staff about those to, topics. To Gary Cohn, to other people in business? To Gary, to Rance, uh, to, to uh, Ivanka, to, to his whole staff about those different subjects. You wrote a very thoughtful letter to, to your uh, employees where you made it clear that you got to be part of the conversation. Was that, was that received well, or do there people who say, you know what, this is, not, this is time for battle lines? So we not only wrote, wrote that letter, then the next day I flew back that night then uh, sat in front of my entire organization uh, at a webcast and talked to them about why we did it. And then we took a poll afterwards to see how did our employees perceive us as a leadership team, our position. And we had over 80% positive response that we were being transparent, they were doing the right thing by being at the table. Uh, and they understood we have to be there talking to people. Well, I got to tell you, I think that uh, that's higher than I thought. But then again, I think you presented it in the letter as a way that really is furthers all the stakeholders' interests, yeah, not just the employees. Exactly, and we're not going to change the co as a company who we are. We stand right. for. 
those values that we believe in. Now, I have articulated several times on TV, you could argue maybe more than several times, that NVIDIA is the great growth engine of a lot of these different, uh, it's a great company, I'm sure you said it, yeah, of artificial intelligence. Sure. But you know what I think that your company has such a huge install base in PCs, $32 billion market, uh, server CPUs, $13 billion, that it's hard to see how much else you have. It's almost as if you've got, that something would be so big for another company isn't that big for Intel. Yeah, and you remember our data center business is an $18 billion Sick. business, right, with great margins and great growth, double-digit growth. Right. And, so, and so we think about this. If you take a look at artificial intelligence, it's a small piece of the data center workload today, right. about 7 to 10% of mm -hmm. the workload. But it's also one of the fastest growing. But, but if you take a look at machine learning or deep learning, whichever one of those workloads right. you want to look at, right, simple machine learning, how you get right. your Amazon videos and things like that, or deep learning where you're really solving problems about facial recognition and all, 90% right. share and above is Intel, running on Intel architecture. And we've made investments in Movidius for machine uh, computer vision. Okay. Uh, we have Xeon, we have Xeon Phi. And then we bought uh, a company called Nirvana, which is a, a special uh, architecture that is designed for artificial intelligence. Two to three X the performance uh, by the end of this year of a GPU-based system. By the end of this decade, we think we can get that to 100x the performance of a okay, GPU-based well, system. Are you doing things that we can't figure out what we'll do yet, but we know that we need them? We're doing things. We're always thinking about technology five years out, five years, right. I mean, because you do out. that. You have a coming in your, by 2020, coming flood of data, of which there are not many companies that are thinking as big as you are. Yeah, and, and, and that's the way we look at it. Today, I, I talk about the cloud is based on people. It's your tweets. Mm -hmm. It's your emails. It's your Facebook posts. Right. The cloud of tomorrow is going to be based on those autonomous cars, those drones that are flying through the air. You know, autonomous car puts out as much data as 3,000 people. One car is 3,000 people's worth of data. Put a million cars on the road, that's equivalent to half the population of the world in data. So we think about the world like that. That's where we see the data center going. Well, what would happen? Uh, just speculation on my part. What would happen if you if you hived off the CPU business? I mean, I know it generates a huge amount of cash, but uh, your price earnings multiple would have to be expand dramatically. I mean, if we took off the the PC or we took yeah, out I took out the PC, which we know you as, but frankly, in mentally is a is a gating factor. But you have to look at how Intel really operates. Yeah. We're basically a silicon company, and that. That PC business, you, you saw record operating profit right. on a declining uh, unit. They, it's a classic. I mean, someday Harvard will write a story about how well that team has managed that business to profitability, increased profitability in a declining market. Okay. That business then throws off the ability to generate all that silicon intellectual property, all the architectural intellectual property, and fund all of the research and development that we're doing all the way out to things like quantum computing. Why do you feel the need, though, to say we are a data company? Why isn't that just by nature that you're a data company? It seems like almost that you have to try to change people's perception of the intel that we know. So, so if you think about it, yes. The reason is right now, if you take a look at it, like you said, 32 billion of our 60 billion almost, 59.5 billion is the PC. But as I go through this, the rest of this decade, by 2020, the, the data center, the, the autonomous cars, the, all of those other things will be bigger than the PC. So we have to start shifting people's thinking that we are a data company because that is where we're headed, right. not where we are. Okay, so last week, uh, when you decided, one of your product lines you said may be growing slower. It was almost as if the world came to an end. And you now, how does that happen? Given what you just said about artificial intelligence, machine learning, why should we even care about a single line item that may be going a little bit slower? Is that just Wall Street speak? Is it hedge fund speak? And we should be thinking bigger about Intel? Yeah, and in fact, in, in some ways, it's good news for us, right? So, oh. so what it says is that the enterprise segment, the segment that is the classic data center at a company uh, like CNBC, right. is de declining at a faster rate, and the cloud is growing at, at an even faster rate as a result. Those workloads are going to the cloud at a rate faster than even we anticipated. That's okay 
It means that our business is in a transition there as well. And as we bring new technologies, we believe we'll grow at even a faster rate in the cloud than we did in enterprise. 3D cross point, silicon photonics, omnipath fabric, all of those technologies are going to dramatically re-engineer how the cloud is architected today. And by the time we get there, will we see that, will it be one of these things where it's a, uh, like IBM, where they went to faster growth, but they also had this legacy business that dropped off, or will the legacy business kind of just stay there, and this faster growth business will overtake it one day? So, so we believe we can keep the PC healthy. Okay. And we can continue to, to, to gain operating margin in that space. All right. So we, we should stay there. And you, what you'll see is that the data center will overtake it as we go into the next decade. Well, that's, that, to me, is a very low-risk, high-reward way to invest if you're someone at home watching you. That's, that's the way I think about it, and that's the way we are driving the company. Well, I'm a believer in it. That's Brian Krasana. She's the CEO of Intel. Stay with Kramer. Booyah! Jim Kramer here from Mad Money. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube. Click here to subscribe and get the jump on my exclusives with CEOs, plus market news, investing advice, and a whole lot more.